Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox Studios at the 1916 Company. This is Watches Tonight. Did you miss me? I missed you. Tonight we talk Breguet watches and value. Chat live and I share your wrist shots tonight on Watches Tonight. So if you enjoy this program, follow me on Instagram where I just hit the 50,000 mark today. That's an old screenshot. So 50,000 followers can't be wrong. One minute videos, updates from my travels around the world. Dubai, Hong Kong, Singapore, I have a big slate this fall and winter. And you can follow me the whole time, Tim underscore Masso on Instagram. Edward, good to see you. Enrique Cassiano, Mark S. from Brooklyn, Eddie Landsberg, Ordinary from Norway, Joe Tyson from Apex, North Carolina, Cull Obsidian, Kevin Hawthorne, Marco D. from Sydney, Jean-Claude Beaver, Matteo C., Thomas Burnett, Robert Dixon from Scotland, Dr. Mick in Florida, we have Jeremy McBee from Hanover, Pennsylvania, and Sean J. staying up late in Dubai, Keystar G60, and C. Flynn from San Diego. Welcome, guys. All right, I asked you answered. Viewer wrist shots number one, starting with Mike P. of Omaha, Nebraska, who leads off with this Rolex Daytona while well, hard at work on dinner. We have Tim and Kate M. They sent me many different wrist shots. I liked this one best. A classical shot of his new Nautilus and her Mech 24. Tim and Kate, I love you guys. Adam and his Resence Type 1 Slim X visit St. Helena during a pre-holiday trip to Napa, California. From St. Helena to, well, Chopek. We have Scott M. wowing with this Chopek Falborg de Cracovie Purple Panda Limited Edition. And Thomas H. prepares for a drink in good taste with his Alango Unzona Saxonia. Send your wrist shots to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com to see your wrist on my list. We have Wassam joining in, Sean Hansen. We've got Decibels and John Anderson from Seattle. Welcome to all you guys. Lex L, you are in the wrist shots tonight, so stay tuned. John N, good to see you again, a longtime supporter of the show. Okay, I always like to talk about value. So you know where to find the stuff that's most expensive or costs too much money. I like to focus on stuff that gives you more than you expect for perhaps less than you expect. Now, about the clickbait thumbnail, no. Breguet watches aren't cheap. I haven't lost sight of the fact that this is still life-changing money for a lot of people for things nobody needs. That said, value is relative in the luxury space, and tonight we are going deep. So with Breguet, modern Breguet wristwatches, you basically get Patek Philippe quality with Jaguar car level depreciation. Have you ever noticed that many watch brands depreciate like the most beleaguered used cars? No company exhibits this miracle of falling prices like Breguet. Well, technically the most famous name in watches and the flagship watch brand of the Leviathan Swatch Group, Breguet simply can't catch a break, at least where the aftermarket is concerned. Maybe it's the burden of the name. It will always be compared unfairly to the exploits and the milestones from Abraham Louis Breguet's own lifetime. These are landmarks that can never be matched. We don't insist that Patek or JLC watches be created by Pateks or LeCoult family members, so why harp on modern Breguet detachment from the historic Breguet clan? I think it needs a clean slate, and tonight we're giving it that. Maybe it's a marketing failure. Note, this is not going to be the episode where I talk about how to fix Breguet. That, along with other brands, will come later. But Swatch Group has left others including Blancpain, Jacques Hedro, Glasuta Urganal, and Harry Winston among its luxury, high luxury brands to wither on the vine with Breguet. So this is not a unique phenomenon, at least not at Swatch Group. It's telling that these Swatch brands all seem to struggle as much as Breguet where used prices are concerned. Perhaps it's just not possible to own and operate so many competing high luxury labels under one roof. Maybe it's just a conflict, maybe they're incompatible, or maybe they're all equally poorly advertised. Maybe though, the problem lies in you and in me. Let's be honest, how much of us, as of right now, at the beginning of this show, intend to make our next luxury watch purchase a Breguet? I didn't think so. There might be one or two of you out there, but I'm guessing most of you are saying nine. 
All right, between the pull of hype brands and the relative obscurity of many Breguet models, even very expensive flagship models, it's easy to get sidetracked even when shopping with an open mind. Today we're going to look at hardware, branding, reputation, social media appeal, snob appeal, we'll have to wait and sit this one out. Today we're talking about buying opportunities for open-minded collectors who demand blue chip luxury watches at less than they would expect to spend. Okay. So Breguet Pilot Watches. Who needs IWC when you've got Breguet? Now, if Breguet has a core model, it's the Type 20 and all of its spawn. So the Type 20 and its offspring, the Type 21 and the Type 22, they're all pilot's watches. And you could easily say that this is the iconic collection, the longest standing, and the only one currently in the catalog that predates the modern high luxury era of Breguet, as this Type 20 contract was initially issued in 1954 by the French Air Force. And although Breguet was not the only company to make a Type 20, it was the most enduring and best remembered to fulfill that contract. So, I would even go so far as to say that the Type 20 is to Breguet what the 50 Fathoms is to Blancpain and the Moonwatch is to Omega. So let's talk about the Type 20. In its modern form, it was launched about a decade after military Type 20s faded out. So 1995 was year one for the modern Type 20. Initially available as the Aero Naval, the 3800 that you see right there, it's distinctive because at 39 millimeters, it's perfectly sized. It's not the vintage watch recreated. It's a modern interpretation. It's got a big eye minute counter on the chronograph. And if you'll note, there is no date. The date on on the 3820 would come along later, and that would be called the Transatlantique. So let's talk about what we've got to offer here. There's an awful lot. The size, 39 millimeters. The water resistance, depending on when you buy, the earlier ones are actually 200 meters. Later on, they would be 100. They have screw down crowns, so you can actually swim with these things. Initial dials were in tritium, and if you're looking for one of the earlier ones from the 90s, I would insist on the tritium dial. So while I wouldn't necessarily call this a vintage watch, there are certainly examples that fit the definition of new vintage or modern vintage, which is a developing field. They're also fascinating pieces is because you've got the aviator's bezel that is both loomed and bi-directional. A lot of bi-directional bezels are not loomed, so you can use this as a timing reference even as you have the chronograph running to time something completely differently. It has a Lemania based automatic, the caliber 582, which means it's got a lovely old name internally with Lemania today manufacture Breguet. You could in a way consider this to be an in-house caliber as the two are now conjoined. I would also say that like the 50s original, it's got flyback capability, which is a handy treat when you're trying to time two things that occur in rapid succession. You don't have to stop, reset, and restart. One push and it all happens. So the Aero Naval, again, has no date. The Transatlantique does have a date. And ever since that became available, it has been the better selling model. This is actually an interesting example right here. Full bracelet, full titanium, carbon fiber dial. So there are a lot of different variants of this watch, and you can shop around and find the one you like best. There have been blue dials, black dials, even rare salmon dials, and the rose gold models often have a chocolate dial. That salmon dial was a 90-piece limited edition in precious metal, and it is awesome. But a more humble Type 20, the Type 3800, cost $10,000 new, which was respectable money 10 years ago, but it costs thousands less than that all day long these days. Consider how little, can we go full screen there just so our viewers on smaller format screens can see this. You're talking between uh, five and $7,000, and seven grand will buy you a tritium dial with a full bracelet. So you've got a range of options, lovely styles available from modern luminous over to vintage tritium and a very wearable size. 39 millimeters is wearable for him and for her. So there's a lot of options right there. And remember, this is a Breguet. One might even say this is the Breguet. The Type 20 is historically true. It predates the Swatch era. It predates Invest Corp. It predates the Chaumet and Daniel Roth era of Breguet. This goes all the way back to the 50s when the Breguet name was as commonly associated with AV 
aviation itself as with watches. And there were aviation and watchmaking breguets. They're parallel lines of the same family. But with Swatch Group ownership came a more modern Type 20, the Type 21. This is the 3810, and it came out in 2004. 42.5 millimeters in diameter. It offers a lot of what the standard Type 20 has, including the water resistance and the aviator's bezel. But it also adds a characteristic of many of these Lemagne chronograph calibers dating back to the 70s, which is a central minutes register in a 60-minute format. And although it looks like it might be a GMT, the 24-hour dial over at 3 o'clock is actually an AM-PM indicator for the time at center. So the central minutes register means you get a 60-minute format instead of a 30-minute format that you'd find on the 38 100 or the 3820, so it's more useful for timing longer interval events. And it still has the flyback capability and the automatic winding, so there's a lot to love here. Again, there have been many versions of this watch. Retail on a strap and a steel case, $11,800, but pre-owned is going to be a lot less. You can see available all day long for under eight grand. That's a lot of watch for the money. And again, a great model line from a truly great brand. And it's not some sort of peripheral model line. This is the heart and soul of Breguet. There have been variations that include colorful dials and titanium cases. And there was a recent Type 3815, a limited edition in titanium, which you could have with bright key lime loom or orange. A fun piece with some vintage elements. All of the functionality of the 3810 is included here. Those were 14900 new, but now I see them all day long for twelve to $13,000 so if you like it, they're sold out, but shop around. Okay, let's see what's going on in the box. We have Curtis from Southern California, a good friend of the channel and a good personal friend as well. A genuinely decent man and an authority in vintage firearms and British cars. We've got Philip P saying, Archie bought a Breguet. Well, Archie did well. We have Justin D saying, hey Tim, what are your thoughts on Breguet with enamel dials? I like them, but stay tuned because you're going to see more of that, including my personal favorite. Mark S saying, Lamagna is in-house Breguet. It definitely is today. And in fact, even before Breguet and Lamagna were conjoined by the Swatch Group, they were owned together. A lot of the Lamagna tourbillon calibers, later used by Breguet, were developed by Daniel Roth, during the 1980s, when he was the chief watchmaker at Breguet. We've got Matt C saying the new Type 20 are very nice, especially on a tan strap. And we've got JCB saying the new date at 4.30 is a disgrace. Not a man to hide his opinions. We got Kojimat or Kojimate, Kogamate. Uh, you got to let me know how to pronounce that right there. Saying, hi, Tim and all. Always a pleasure to listen to you. Please let me know exactly how to pronounce your name because I've struggled with it before and I want to get it right. It's your name. You deserve to hear it correctly. We have Curtis saying, Type 20 3800, one of my favorite pilot's watches. How hard are the 200 meter versions to find with the gold capped crown? Hard. I've only seen a handful of them and I see a lot of watches. Uh, we saw him with the question, how many years are necessary to pass before watch becomes vintage? I would say the number one criterion is just whether the watch is still representative of watches being made by the industry in general today or by that brand in particular. So it's a very subjective thing, but an example would be brass movement FP Journe watches. The last of them were made in the mid 2000s, but by the standards of current FP Journe, those are considered to be modern given a relatively young brand and the fact that the brass movements are unlike anything it's producing today and there will not be at least many more. Occasionally they come back as a special, but not regular production. So it varies, but I think anything from the 1990s we can now safely call vintage. After all, Radwood cars, those are now vintage. Watches should be thought of the same way. Okay, the behemoth of the Type 20 collection, and technically the most interesting from an engineering standpoint, is the Type 22. First, you need a wrist fit for the purpose. 44 millimeters by about 18 millimeters thick. This is an alternative to something like a 44 millimeter Royal Oak Offshore, but technically much more sophisticated than the Audemars Piguet. You will marvel at everything it offers, starting with a GMT, a 24-hour scale, a flyback chronograph, 
a 30-second chronograph hand that moves at twice the speed to offer twice the resolution, a central register 60-minute hand, a flyback chronograph capability, there's a date, there's a 72,000 vibration per hour silicon escapement with a silicon hairspring and a free-sprung balance to match. Look at the size of that balance wheel, super tiny because it's 10 hertz. 20 beats per second. It also has 100 meter water resistance and tons of loom, so you can see it at night. Retail on a strap was steep, $20,100. Used is more like 12 to 14,000 on the strap, and I highly recommend you get it that way. This is one of the most sophisticated pilot's watches ever made, packed with features and daily drivable, even if you like to swim with your watches. As you can see here, there was a bracelet, but you've really got to have the wrist to match because this thing is monumental. Okay, speaking of wrists, wrist shots number two. Neil and his Rolex GMT Master II prepare the next generation of watch collector, his grandson. And then, actually he wears that pretty well for a baby wrist, literally a baby wrist. A Tony P of Philly prepares Omega's response. With his daughter and his 1916 company bought Omega Speedmaster Professional Moonwatch, thank you for trusting our newly rebranded company. We have Matt P flying to Victoria, British Columbia with his Zenith DeFi El Primero 21. Jimmy Y kicks off the holidays with his Omega Speedmaster 321 Ed White. Lovely shot right there. And we've got John F., who flies home from Italy with his Italian-made and oil-filled U-boat Dark Moon. Send your wrist shots to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com to see your watch on these boxes. And I can still use the your watch on this box because technically, at least until early next year, we are going to be both the 1916 company and watchbox. All right, let's see what's going on. DC saying Breguet Pilots watches are so cheap, it's beyond belief. It's true, depreciation is on your side. Juan Manuel Tapia joining us from Mexico. Thank you for joining in. We've got Bicycle Chess Tour saying Archie Luxury should get much more respect. Well, I respect Archie. He's He's a tough character and he plays it well. Uh, what else have we got going on here? Edward K. Ledden saying, look up Breguet 7077, one of the best chronographs I've ever seen and I've got to agree with you right there. Philip Page joining in, John Galt joining in, Mike or Watch Mike do joining in, and Bob Golub joining in saying, what a pity the Type 20 is not based on a column wheel caliber. The look is nevertheless awesome. Some cam chronographs are deeply impressive. Definitely read the writings of Chuck Maddox and you might have a different view on LaMagna cam chronographs. They are the technical and qualitative equal of many column wheels. What else is going on in the box? Steve 1010 saying, Tim, I enjoyed seeing you in Dubai, showing some new watches, you better believe it. And Joseph P, you definitely have to check out my collector conversation with Joseph P. He is now in the box, opining on Breguet. All right, guys, let's talk about the Breguet Marine. Who needs a Nautilus? If you want a sports watch and a base metal with the horological chops to match the Patek, this is where you look. I'll admit that with cam chronographs inside the Type 20, 21, and 22, maybe from a base movement standpoint, they're not as sophisticated as what you'd expect from a luxury Breguet. But with the Marines, we dive 20,000 leagues under retail prices, and with a series that most of us should consider, it is the qualitative equal of Vash run and Patek and Langa and AP. So the Marine, this is going to be talk of the Marine 5817. So much missed and still revered. Uh, this modern Marine was launched in the early 1990s, right around 1990. But the big date that you see here came out in 2004. So big date, but not a big case. Nicely sized at 39 millimeters. It's a versatile watch on the wrist. And it's beautifully made with a hand finished case. Despite the integrated strap, small wrist fit is excellent. As you can see of this blue dial example on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters circumference. You have a solid gold 18 karat dial. The closer you get, the more impressive it becomes. So solid gold and cut on rose lathes for traditional hand guilloche. Black, silver, two-tone, and other dials were offered during the lifespan of this watch from 2004 to 2018. 
caliber 517 is a Frédéric Piguet, so a blanc pain movement, with twin mainspring barrels, caliber 517 right there, beautifully decorated. The beat rate was stepped up for sports watch duty here, so it's a four hertz, it's a four hertz escapement, I should say, not a three hertz like the conventional 1150. So this is a high beat 1150 derivative with a gorgeously rose lathe cut guilloche wave or seashell like rotor. The anglage, the striping, the satination, the black polish here is the equal to what you'll find on a Patek 324 or an Audemars Piguet 4302, maybe even a little bit better than the Audemars Piguet. And again, being Frédéric Piguet based, it has definite high horology chops. With twin barrels, it's got a nice stable rate and amplitude from full wind to minimum wind. And later examples had silicon hairsprings, making them even more resilient. These are high horology finished movements. Now, rotors feature guilloche work on solid gold, and they look tremendous. You can see some more details of the stripes, the solarization of the barrel, and the anglage right there. I would also say you could have a Patek Philippe 5167A Aquanaut for $24,250 new or clinically insane secondary market prices. I don't recommend that, even though I've probably got one just like it to sell you right now. I would recommend you go for value with Breguet. The actual retail price for the 5817 is $15,500, but used examples are accessible for, well, twelve dollars to $13,000, and that includes full bracelet options. So if you want your integrated bracelet steel sports watch from a high horology brand with finish on dial and movement to match, this is the way to go. Okay. Marine 5517, the new school. Not everyone warmed up to this watch initially when it bowed in 2018. I'm finally warming up to some versions, such as this lovely wave pattern guilloche cut model. Now it's 40 millimeters in titanium, grade five, which is great. Perfect size, durable material. This is an excellent package that suffered at launch due to two factors. First, certain dial variants appeared antiseptic and insipid compared to the 5817. Now the 5817 had a lovely Nautilus-like dial, and by Nautilus, I mean the animal, not the watch. Dials on both old and new marine are gold, but the guilloche style of the old watch is more endearing and more obviously lathe cut. Second, the integrated lugs on the new model are not universally loved. It's clear that even in 2018, Breguet viewed the Marine as its gambit to win a piece of the endlessly growing market for integrated bracelet sports watches. And a little bit like the original Odysseus from Langa, it wasn't a perfect adaptation of the type to the brand signatures. However, the crafting and finish of these new Marines, and this is dial guilloche right here, matches or exceeds the quality of the old 5817. The 5517 is not to be underestimated. The new Marine is a likable watch, but if you're ambivalent at the retail price of 18,300, better deals are available used right now, immediately, for instant delivery. Figure on a solid $3,000 off. Now, I love alarm watches. I think the alarm is the most useful complication. And there is the Marine Alarm Musicale. This is a spectacular watch. A GMT alarm, and it's both, that is loomed, automatic, and mounted on a factory rubber strap. This is almost perfect. What has it got? Well, still just 40 millimeters and titanium, like the 5517, it is super compact. The movement, yet again, is a blanc pad derived, caliber 519 this time. You could see the rotor, a ship's wheel, Breguet fashion, the finish, impeccable and price appropriate. This is a automatic that can wind both the time telling functions and the alarm power reserve. Look at that ratchet wheel in the upper right hand corner. Look at the solarization. Look at the stripes in their gradient. The black polished screws, the hand decorated rotor, the engine turning underneath the balance, the anglage up at the top center. Beautiful stuff right here. And this is high horology, inside and out. The alarm can even be deactivated when not required. And there's a power reserve for the alarm at about 11 o'clock so you know if it's wound before you set the alarm and arm it. I will also say this, 
This is a beautiful movement with a minute repeater style striker. You will feel like you got your money's worth. While retail is steep at $30,100, $5,000 discounts can be found either pre-owned or gray market. They're not exactly the same thing. Remember, gray market is an unretailed watch that went from an authorized dealer to an unauthorized dealer and then from there sells to an end user, whereas a pre-owned watch is sold by an authorized dealer or an unauthorized dealer to an end user. That end user then sells it himself privately or sells it to a pre-owned dealer like 1916. So there's one more step in a pre-owned watch. Gray market, again, is something that went from an authorized dealer to an unauthorized dealer. So those are like the Ashfords and the Joma shops of the world. Either way, figure on five grand off this or about one sixth of the retail price if you buy it other than new. And that is how I would buy. Jumping in right here, let's see what's going on in the box. A lot of you have joined in and I really appreciate that. We've got Leo joining in from Brasov, Romania, staying up late in continental Europe. And then we have Philip Page saying the Breguet Marine watches pay homage to Abraham Louis Breguet's role as the official watchmaker of the French Royal Navy. Indeed, that is true. And you're going to learn more about that right now with the Marine Equation of Time or the Equation Marchand 5887. This features a running equation of time, perpetual calendar. It has, well, it was a 2017 launch that preceded the next generation marine collection. The 5887 might be the ultimate swimmable watch. So 2017 launch packed with action, including the following features, a running equation of time, which is a circular equation of time that traces your civil time hour hand and shows on a running basis the difference between the two. It has the tourbillon, that also shows you the four times a year that civil time and true solar time coincide. It has a silicon escapement and a silicon hairspring that makes for low friction and anti-magnetic qualities. You can see all of this on a tourbillon, no less. It has a perpetual calendar in my favorite style, apertures for the day and the month with a retrograding date in anchor form. You can see the equation of time with a little sun hand right there sort of a pickle style crinkle cut. It has a 100 meter water resistance. You can see applied and blued gold Roman numerals on a solid gold dial rose lathe cut. It has that loomed gold dial with elaborate guilloche, handsomely executed, ever so slightly off center. Details matter right here. The case back with a hand engraved image of the Royal Louis, which was on an ongoing basis, always the largest ship in the French Navy, because as our friend Philip Page mentioned in the chat box, Breguet was the watchmaker to the French Marine, and it says so right there, Horloger Marine, Horloger de la Marine. Okay, so that's great, but look at the movement. Can we go back real quick? It's freehand engraved, whereas the dial is guilloché on a lathe. This is done by hand with a burin, both on the barrel cap and on the bridges, so no two are exactly alike. Look what else it's got. Caliber 581 DPE has a rare peripheral rotor for automatic winding and an 80 hour power reserve. Now at 43.9 millimeters in platinum, it costs almost a quarter million dollars at 242,000 US dollars. But I've seen this model advertised both used and gray market for under 200 grand. So if you have Audemars Piguet Royal Oak concept money, you can get something even better that won't leave you flat out embarrassed to wear the thing on your wrist. And yes, that is the latest Royal Oak concept. Guys, viewerist shots number three, JCS, a longtime supporter of the show, and a colorful character with his blanc pas 50 fathoms scuba and matching Tonka truck, two of my favorite things, past and present. I still love Tonka trucks and, well, watches are forever. Alan S. kicks back in comfort with his Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter ceramic and rose gold in the hot tub. That is more like a hot pool. That is the biggest hot tub I've ever seen. Chapeau, my man. Dr. Mufadal G. rocks. 
With his epic Schwarz Etienne by Kerry Voudelin and Roma Synergy, bought from Peter Bell here at 1916. Doctor, thank you for trusting our company. Robert R. of Scottsdale, Arizona, sports a Rolex Explorer and recently visited our newly acquired Hyde Park location. Thank you for visiting our company. James H. rocks a superb JLC Reverso Grand Thai Duo face also bought from our team at 1916, and I thank you, James. Send your wrist shots to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com to see your analog here on my digital. All right, let's see what's going on in the box. Mark S. saying he loves that wave dial, and I've got to agree. James Long, Tim, really want your opinion. Would you rather buy a Chapek Antarctique or Parmigiani PF Tonda? Probably the Antarctique because it wears much smaller. And from a movement standpoint, I think it's more impressive. I like the quick release for the bracelet and the accessory straps. I like the thinness and compactness of it. And I like the fact that you have a huge range of dials. They've made many variations, so you're guaranteed to find something you like. Morton T joining in from Norway. Breguet is totally underrated. Superb combo of history, beauty, and craftsmanship. And I totally agree with that. Now, dress watches. Okay, enough with the sports watches. Frankly, the entire genre is overexposed and oversubscribed. Most of us don't swim with truly expensive watches anyway, but we spend a ton of time socially at the office and handling errands around the house or out in town high and dry, relatively removed from strenuous physical activity. So let's dress like it. Starting with dress watches, have you ever concerned, now someone asked about enamel dials here, but have you ever considered a Breguet 3420 jump hour for your next dress watch? This is another one of those new vintage watches from the 1990s. My guess is a lot of you are seeing this watch for the first time. Okay, it fills every column. Great brand, check. Breguet may languish right now, but Swatch will back it eternally with parts and service support for all models forever. Vintage, released in 1992 this model, so check. Rare, only 800 in colored gold, 400 were in platinum, so you're guaranteed exclusivity. Versatile size, believe it, 36 millimeters in diameter, less than eight millimeters thick and still automatic. Distinctive, well, the 3420 looks like no other modern Breguet, though it is inspired by historic pocket watches and wristwatches previously manufactured. Fine, well, cold rolled case that's been hand finished, hand welded lugs in a hand manufactured case, slow fabrication, grand faux enamel dial with breguet Arabic numerals and one fired blue steel breguet hand. The market for these is low 30,000s, but let me opine that this is the bottom of the market. These will gain value. Frankly, we've hit bottom. These will gain more attention in years to come as the Breguet brand recovers, especially as we start to look at 80s and 90s Breguet as a class of collectibles unto themselves. Remember, the AP Star Wheel just a decade ago was a $12,000 watch. I know, because I should have bought one for that price back then. Oh, if only I had. Think about the 3420 Breguet as something very similar from a comparable brand. And yes, Breguet is comparable in stature to AP, historically and in my opinion, qualitatively even today. Speaking of Audemars Piguet, Audemars Piguet just won the GPHG Aiguille d'Or with its $1,956,000 Code 1159 Ultra Complication Le Universel. Now, the Aiguille d'Or is basically best picture at the Oscars of watchmaking, which is what the GPHG is. But you can own the 2014 Aiguille d'Or for less than the price of a routine AP factory service on that crazy near $2 million Audemars Piguet. The Breguet Classique Chronometry 7727 won the GPHG's big prize and immediately vanished into obscurity. Very few of these are made or were made. Technically still available, I hardly ever see them, even in this business where I see everything. I've only reviewed one, and as far as I can tell, we've only ever had two in inventory. So, you should know this watch. Unlike many mega complications and conventional GPHG champions, the 7727 is only 41 millimeters in diameter and less than 10 millimeters thick. The case is available in rose, or my preference, white gold, and the dial is traditional Breguet rose lathe guilloche on an 18 karat solid gold base. There is a one tenth of a second micro counter at one o'clock. It makes the 72,000 vibration per hour escapement tangible from the dial side of the watch. Basically 
basically, it's a whirling hand that defies any kind of practical use, but it looks badass. That's where the conventional features end. Now, the movement is a complete version of the system teased, technically only in part on the Type 22 pilot's watch. So, here is the crazy assortment that is the highlight. First, Breguet parachute shock protection designed by the master himself, adapted for the 21st century. That's on the capstone. Start moving down and things go nuts from there. You have a unique balance that operates at 72,000 vibrations per hour. You can see it is free sprung with variable inertia bolts and a special DRI E-cut silicon hairspring that is both anti-magnetic and non-reactive to changes in temperature. Because of its unusual architecture, it is also a flat hairspring that breathes concentrically like an overcoil. There are magnetic balance pivots only possible because the hairspring and escapement are in silicon. The detail of the system reveals that one pivot, look at the bottom, touches the shock protected jewel assembly at the top and the other, this is the one at the bottom, floats permanently suspended over its own jewel cup so it doesn't even require lubrication and the magnet halves the friction because only one pivot physically touches a jewel and the field doubles as an effective shock protection spring for that lower pivot. As a matter of fact, this movement has been documented running to a deviation of fractions of a second gained per day. Think 0 0.25, 0 0.3 seconds gained per day. That is the factory tested internal tolerance from Breguet. Now that's a matter of fact. As a matter of rumor, and look at the finish there, Whispers have long indicated that this movement was tested informally at the Lalo Horology Museum's Concorde Chronometry. Had it been officially scored and acknowledged, it would have beaten every double or quadruple tourbillon Grubel Forsey, JLC tourbillon, boutique independent and purpose-built chronometry movement ever tested at the Concours competition. This is unofficially the most accurate movement the museum's competition ever tested. The Classique costs $42,100 in rose gold. It costs $42,600 in white gold. But as always, shop around, guys. Gray market seems to be about 35 to 37 grand, but actual used watches pictured here on Chrono transact for under $30,000. And the last one we sold went for about $25,000 in rose gold five years ago. But the lack of actual inventory on Chrono 24 and the fact that our last sale was half a decade ago highlight a desirable trade of the 7727 for long-term owners and that this is a rare watch by any standard. All right, viewerist shots number four. You've seen Breguet, now see Lex L who keeps is cool with the Rolex Explorer 2 Polar and watches tonight on the tube, a man of good taste. Nishant P wows with his spectacular Chopard Louis Ulysse Chopard Quattro Spirit 25. Jump hour, enamel dial, eight day power reserve, that watch is stacked. Tom P explores the passages of Gloucester Cathedral with his IWC Portuguese chronograph. Paul E of West Sussex, England, sports his JLC Master Geographic, bought us his wedding day watch. What a way to celebrate. And Tack sends us home with his spectacular shot of his Blancpain 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe flyback chronograph on the sands of Dubai. And I just got back from Dubai. Tack, it was a pleasure meeting you there. Guys, send your wrist shots to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com to see your watch in this box. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks to Sean back in the saddle with me. Time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.